Hello, so we've been learning about um, clustering, which is a kind of unsupervised machine learning. And the algorithm we've learned so far for it is called k-means. Today I'm going to be introducing a very different algorithm, which is called agglomerative clustering. Uh, the main difference between these is hierarchy. Um, with non-hierarchical clusters, basically every row or every point uh, gets assigned to one cluster, and so cl clusters are not overlapping. Um, in hierarchical clustering, uh, you can be logged to multiple clusters, and clusters can be logged in other clusters. And so the example I'm going to look at there is called um, agglomerative clustering. It'll be one algorithm for producing that. There are others. K-beads is one, uh, one example of not hierarchical. There are other th others there as well. Um, I chose this for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that it's used a lot by biologists, or in particular anybody looking at uh, biological sequences, whether that means DNA or proteins. Um, I just uh, searched for a kind of a miscellaneous um, dendogram here, which is going to be the style of plot we're going to use to represent a hierarchical cluster. And I found um, I found a paper here, and uh, and this is a picture in it. And so I'm just going to back into the biology of going what's on here because I don't understand all of that, but I understand kind of the general strategy of what it means to uh, have this hierarchical clustering. So um, what we can see based on this is that there are these things, which I don't know if these are proteins or or maybe DNA sequences, something like that. And we can see when uh, two sequences are similar, right? I can see, well, maybe these two are similar, these two are similar. And uh, and then I can see, well, maybe these two over here are not quite as similar to, to these over here, and that's why this draws up farther. We have some sort of measure of distance um, up on the top. So this should look like a tree, uh, maybe kind of a funny tree, but it is a tree. And uh, it turns out this is a binary tree. So when we're doing these dendograms and hierarchical clustering, we're going to be working with these special binary trees. So remember that a binary tree, um, each node can have at most two children. So that means it could have zero, one, or two. Um, this is special in, in a couple ways. One is that either we're a leaf and we have no children, so all of these um, kind of texts down here, uh, those are leaves, or we'll have exactly two children. There's no one between. There's not going to be any node that has one one child. Okay, so that's one thing that makes it special. The other thing that makes it special is um, is for each node. And, and by the way, just like maybe these are more obviously nodes, any any kind of junction point between two sides is a node, right? So this is a node. This is a node. At each um, non-leaf node. So for example, I have a non-leaf node here. Um, it's going to have some sort of distance measure, right? And I guess I'm plotting that here. And what that means is that the distance between this group over here and this group over here is about 40, according to whatever measure um, I'm using. And, and there's different ways to measure the distances between things. All right, so those are the two things that are special. We either have two children or no children. And when we do have children, we have um, in our node a distance that tells us the difference between our two children. So rather than uh, kind of work with a real biological example like that, um, I constructed the simplest case I could imagine that would actually demonstrate the concepts. And that is a data set right here where we have three points. So I have these three rows here. And, uh, and in this case, I have two feature columns. So I have an X column and a Y column. And some of these points are more similar to each other than others. And, and by similar, I mean that if I were to put them on a plot, uh, the points are, are kind of near each other. Um, it turns out, uh, well, so what is that called? That's called Euclidean distance. It turns out that uh, the Euclidean distance formula is defined even if I had, say, 10 dimensions, right? I can say, what is the difference between these two dimensional points? So I'm thinking of each um, of each row as either a point in two-dimensional space or maybe more, right? So if I plot it over here on the left, um, I think this is A, this is B, and this is C, I can see that maybe I could group um, A and B together. Those are kind of near each other. And then I could have another group that combines C and that first group I made, right? So that's kind of the hierarchical picture I'm going for. Cluster zero contains cluster one. So how could I represent both this data and this clustering here? Um, I could represent it as a tree. And so let me just look at this over here. I have my A, B, and C nodes, <coughs> which are for my original data. And then I have two um, non-leafs that correspond to my two clusters over here. And so cluster one contains A and B, and the way I'll represent that over here is that cluster one will be the parent of A and B. So being the parent is really a way of saying, um, I'm a cluster that contains this group. Similarly, uh, cluster zero 
contains cluster 1 and C, right? And that's why it contains cluster 1 and C over here, all within that big circle. Okay, what we want to eventually work towards is not having this picture, which is from graph phys, but having this um, dendrogram, which will uh, not just show us the hierarchy, but really show us the distance between siblings. I want to know how similar or different A and B are, for example. I want to know how similar and different cluster 1 and C are. And so to create this kind of plot, we have to create a special matrix called a link linkage matrix. A linkage matrix is a way of describing um, a binary graph, and, and that's what uh, the function we're going to use to draw this requires. And, and so this is an example of a linkage matrix and some other stuff right here. And, and basically this down here corresponds to this picture up here with a little bit of extra information. So every row um, is a node, and that's why I have five nodes. Um, I have a column where I have the name for each of them. And then to represent these edges, I have a left column and a right column. And so let me look at what this means. So if I'm looking at cluster 1 here, I see that 0 is referring up here, right? This is index 0 right here. That means there's an edge from cluster 1 to A, right? So I have that edge right there. Okay, this 1 means that my other child is right here. It's B, right? So B is at index 1. And so that's going to be this edge right here. Um, what else do I have? So down here now, um, this one, what is this? This is, I guess, to this right here at cluster, at index three, I have another cluster, right? So that means that uh, cluster zero has an edge to, oh, not that one. It has an edge to cluster one. And then this two right here, right? I guess that's position two, um, and that's C, and that's how I get this edge right here. So I have all that information. That really, everything I've looked at so far really kind of captures uh, the picture up above. Um, I also have the distance between my children, right? So distance is just zero when I'm a leaf node. But otherwise, I have to say, well, what is the distance between my two children? And, uh, and, and so you can imagine that um, in cluster one, right, my children are A and B. And so the distance here, the distance here is three, and that's why I have a three down here. And, um, and, and similarly, and oh so that's not right that's why i have a three right here okay and then up here uh i, I guess i'm going to have the differences between this and this i take the average of that and that's how i'm going to get this uh four right here okay so um this last column here are the number of nodes that I have in each subtree. And, uh, and so, for example, at cluster 0, up here I have uh, 5 subnodes. That's wrong right here. This is a 5, um, and then so on and so forth. We aren't going to care too much about this because it doesn't show up in our picture when we head over here to the right. Okay, so we've seen five different ways of looking at this same, same data. And I'm going to do some demos on how to work between these. So this picture up here on the top left is not going to be part of any demo um, I'm doing. What I also want to do is I want to see, well, how can I go to this data, to this hierarchy? How can I go from this hierarchy to this uh, matrix? And then how can I go from this matrix to this picture over here, which is the dendrogram? And, uh, and it turns out that if I'm looking at this, what do I need over here? I guess this ABC shows up down here, so I'm going to need that to make this picture. Um, cluster 1 and cluster 0 never show up in this picture, so I'm not going to need that. All of this is really just um, not telling me anything. There's no useful information there, so I won't need that. So, so to create this picture, I mean this piece here and this piece here, and that second piece is what we would call a, a linkage matrix, right? So I'm maybe generating that big um, table and then kind of pulling that out. So I'm going to work backwards, right? I'm going to start with this big table. And then I'm going to create a dendrogram from that. And then I'm going to think about, okay, well, if I have a tree, how do I create that table? And then finally, I'm going to think, okay, if I have the data, how do I make that, that tree? I, I kind of like to work backwards because then we can see um, the motivation. What are we ultimately trying to get in the end? Otherwise, the code up here is very complicated, so I don't want to really start with that because then we kind of forget, well, where are we actually headed? So that's why I'm going to work backwards. Okay, so I'm going to head over to my notebook and, and do this demo one right here. 
So I am going to escape out of this and I am going to head to my demo notebook. And so we want to go from a linkage matrix to a dendrogram. That's that uh, binary tree picture where we have distance, one of the axes. And, and so I have that same data from before, right? That's just right here. And, uh, and then I have that table basically just hard coded, right? That I had before. So this is my big table from before. Let me actually just delete this for a moment. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this dendrogram function, dendro, dendrogram. And I, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have a linkage matrix here. And then I'm going to have some labels for the leaves. So maybe I'll call this leaf labels. And, uh, and I have to pass that in as a, um, I have to pass that in as a keyword argument. Where does this thing come from? It comes from SciPy. So I, I did a scipy.cluster.hierarchy import dendrogram. SciPy is a package that um, in general you would have to install yourself, except that we've already installed sklearn and sklearn depends on SciPy. So you should already have SciPy there and you should be able to do an import just like this. Okay, so let me look at this down here. Uh, the two pieces, maybe I'm just going to do the leaf labels first. The leaf labels are these pieces right here. And I'm just going to hard code this for now. I just want to think about what how this is working before we actually um, kind of do the rest of the demo, which gets more complicated. All right, so I'm going to have my graph here and I can slice it. I can say, um, I can say, uh, dot, well, first off, I could convert it to a NumPy array like that if I like, and then I could slice. I could have a row slice and then a column slice. And, and I know I want column zero. And for my rows, I want the first three. I'm going to get that, and, uh, and that's what I'm going to pass in here, right? So I'm going to say, this is my leaf labels. So I'm going to grab that, put it right here. Okay, what about my linkage matrix? My link linkage matrix is this subset right here. So it's going to be four columns, and it's going to be one row for every non-leaf node. And so let me, let me do that. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say linkage matrix is going to be graph.values. And so let me just look at this again, right? So if I have graph.values, I want to pull out just this piece right here. And so again, I may have to slice it. I may have to have a row slice and a column slice. And my column slices, I see that I'm really just ignoring that first, uh, or I guess I should say zero columns. I'm going to do that. And then for the rows, I guess it's just starting at position three, right? So this was zero, one, two, three, and onward, right? So let me look at my link matrix here, and I see that. And so I'm going to pass this in. I'm going to put my link matrix right here. And, uh, and leaf labels is not defined because why? I could have sworn I ran that earlier. Maybe not. Let me make sure that's defined. Uh, I do that, and it's going to complain uh, that it wants doubles. Um, we're used to floats, and uh, and in other programming environments, there might be different names for that. A double is a kind of float. So what's going to make it happy here is if I just say um, as type, float is going to satisfy that constraint that it's a double, right? So, so basically, it's like not an integer. It's a number that has some floating point aspect to it. And there I can see I have my dendrogram. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here. But what we want to do next time is think about if I have a tree, how can I automatically pull out these things?